It's an indoor lightning surge arrestor, but not just any indoor lightning surge arrestor. This one is used in Africa, and it was sent by Frank, who says, In this package you will find amongst the much-needed sweet treats, Frank said, sent sweet treats, a one-pole overvolted protection device which I purchased on the African continent. I paid 60 Zambian kwacha, which at the current exchange rate comes to about two pounds. That's uh, something like three dollars or something, I think, and think three American dollars. What can you expect for that kind of money? Keep in mind that the same component sold here is a lot cheaper in other countries because it's based on the country's uh, value of the money, what they can afford. Uh, let's talk about the sweet treats. It's known for three things. First, they're pronounced stroop waffles. Indeed, I've I've been enjoying the stroop waffles. They sell them here as well. They're basically little wafers and layered with caramel. And uh, very nice. And also, uh, licorice gums, drop gums. Zucker Vridge drop and fruit schmack drop gums. These are sugar-free, but they are stevia, which means about half the calories of sugar-based candy. That'll be interesting to try. And last but not least, he sent uh, what he claims is the country's favourite chocolate bar, really. Uh, I have eaten it. Um, but this is, is the one they sell locally. The Tony's chocolate only is sold locally. The difference is that uh, the text inside is very is very Dutch. Dit is impact. Uh, dit is gene reap. But uh, very interesting. Let me just open this quickly for you. It's, before I start the teardown of that, I know the video is about this, but... Let me show you this chocolate bar. Oh, it's very different. This is new. Why is our bar unequally divided? To us, it doesn't make sense. Between people's eyes and, and, okay, and equality in the chocolate industry. Yes, yes, whatever. But look at this. It's quite stylish. That's quite nice for a chocolate bar, isn't it? Uh, very neat. I'm going to eat a bit right now. Mm, right. That's the chocolate out the way. Now, uh, the overvoltage protection uh, in the American circuit breaker style stuff in Zambia, they fit these in every meter cabinet where overhead wires, single phase plus neutral go to a building. So they combine th that oddly here. They do combine neutral to earth. We don't really do that in the overhead line systems here, the type TT. We use an earth electrode. But because the only real metal is the roof, they connect an earth wire up to the roof and have that combined to neutral. So that is their equi potential zone. I kind of have a feeling that's a slight oddity. Maybe it's for lightning strikes. I'm not really sure. <laughs> that would couple a lightning strike onto your electrical system. Anyway, he suggested that I test these with high voltage. What a great idea. And then I'll open it up and we can see what's inside. Uh, Frank also sent these, which are combined metal oxide varistor and a gas discharge. The gas, uh, well, it is GDT, isn't it? Gas discharge tube, uh, which is a um, sort of gapped gas type device for transients uh, this one is rated 251 volt it says 14d 251k what that means is 14 millimeter diameter because it's a d for a disc and then 251k is it's the voltage it'll start turning on in this case which is 25 and 10 which is 250 volts that's quite low i can't even think where that would be used maybe 120 volt systems anyway let me set up the high voltage equipment and we'll test both these items and see at which point they start conducting. One moment, please. The high voltage equipment is set up. I've got the gun stuck in one end and the earth clamp connected to the other end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up to burn mode, which will just run the current continuously. We'll go up to actually 2kV should be enough for this. 2kV should be more than enough. So let's start the experiment. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to start turning the voltage up and we'll see at what point any significant current starts coupling across. So 0.3 thousand volts, <clears throat> 500 volts. The current is creeping up. 0.2 milliamps. Let's go for a milliamp, see what voltage it takes to get that up to one milliamp, which is going to be quite a lot of current, really. That'll be a lot of dissipation, that unit. I wonder if it's going to heat up and trip. If it's got a trip device. So, um, one milliamp at 750 volts. Okay, radio. I shall turn this off. And we'll also test. So, what was the specification for that? 
Um, minimum spark over voltage, 800 volts. Maximum spark over voltage, 1000 volts. I wouldn't say it was sparking over. It says gap type with non-linear silicon carbide resistor. I didn't really notice any sort of sparking effect. Uh, what if we just turn that off again? Oh, it won't go up too high. The current goes up so high that it clamps the voltage in the unit because it is current limited. Okay, so it goes up to 800 volts before it is clamping at about three, 3 milliamps. Okay, let's try the experiment with one of these metal oxide resistor type things. If I can find that, I'll just put them somewhere. Also, I'm going to have to use a screwdriver to release the high voltage terminal because I just stuffed it into the end of these. It's very basic. There's no, it's not shrouded in any way. It's just these exposed connections. Where have I put the metal oxide resistors? What have I actually done with them? Uh, one moment, please. And resume. That is actually rated for the AC voltage. Normally in the UK on 240 volts. Ours would be rated uh, marked 470 volts, but sometimes they come rated 250 volt uh, with the wee AC symbol. This one says uh, max continuous operating voltage 250 volts RMS. I'd normally go for 275 here. And it will theoretically, the max DC is 320. I wonder what voltage is going to start clamping. There's one way to find out. I've stuffed one end of this up the end of the test probe. And uh, the other end has got the lead on it. We'll turn it on and we'll turn the voltage up. It shouldn't go up too high this time. Let's go for one milliamp. So we're at 300 volts. The current is not majorly. It's gone down again. Oh, there it goes. It's suddenly taking off at about 400 volts. Let's go for one milliamp, which is quite a lot at 400 volts. 400 milliwatts. That thing should get pretty hot. Let's go for one milliamp. And it really is clamping quite hard at 460 volts. Okay, I'm going to turn it off. Uh, 460 volts, it's clamping at one milliamp. I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to feel that. Yeah, it's quite warm. Yeah, okay, right. Uh, let's... Get this out of the way, and then I'll drill this open, and we can explore what's inside. One moment, please. And resume. I do have a picture for you. I opened one of these devices with the combined gas discharge tube metal oxide varistor. And if I show you a picture of the inside, you can see there's a disc of uh, metal oxide varistor. And they've just sandwiched on a tiny little gas discharge tube, which has an electrode on either side, and then the ceramic uh, surround and that's got some sort of inert gas inside it. Interesting. Here is a typical version of that, just a little ceramic tube with a metal cap on each end. And uh, this is a classic metal oxide varistor, so they've just combined the two by sandwiching it on like that. Interesting. Very neat. Never seen that before. Not sure of the main advantages. So, here is a device. I've not opened it up because I don't want to spoil the surprise. This has popped out because the case is coming apart. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? That is not what I was expecting. So, there's a big metal oxide varistor. That is huge. Here's a metal cup for that. It did mention a gas discharge tube. This isn't a gas discharge tube. Is that supposed to be a gas discharge tube? Is this just Packers? I think it is just Packers. So this is just basically a couple of copper shims. Where's a magnet? Trust nothing. <laughs> a couple of copper plated steel shims. Lovely. Um that are acting as a packer for a metal oxide varistor and there is no thermal protection against this going down. There's nothing to even indicate when it's failed. It literally is just this arrangement here, just springy brass magnet. Brass-ish type material. On that, it doesn't have the thing that they often have, the thermal fuse. Or in the case of many of the devices I've looked at, it's a soldierable link with a spring in it that when this fails and it starts heating up, it basically 
shunt. So this is going to potentially start dissipating a lot of heat when it fails. Interesting. I wonder if this is a clone or if it's the real thing and what other devices they have. Um, hold on, where's the data sheet for that? It is here. Minimum spark over voltage. Gapped type with non linear silicon carbide. Just gapped type. What does it mean, gapped? Is that to do with these? Is there a, a tiny gap somewhere? I didn't see anything that would be a gap. Dunno. Strange. The fact that it's got. Uh, but I suppose it's not really carrying current, is it? Except when it has that huge transient it has to deal with. Uh, maybe this was supposed to be some sort of like spark gap in there with a ring around it. With an insulating ring. And then this, but they've just basically just sandwiched it in like that. Uh, so there we have it. Uh, interesting stuff. Uh, but would I trust one of these in my own house? I'm not sure I'd want that. But then again, this is unfortunately aimed at Africa. Which is still kind of third world-ish. But I suppose it's better than nothing, and I get the feeling more than anything else it's designed to protect, provide basic protection to uh, lightning strikes on overhead lines. But there we have it, the um, very minimalist interior of the Surgery Restor and the much more interesting combined metal oxide varistor and a spark gap in, that is a gas discharge tube that is real in that instance.